everybody. Hello. My name is Robert. This is Anne here. That's Sarah. The Magnus is just disappeared around the corner. We are the Astrid's team. I'm going to introduce you to my long term friend, Philip Bullion. We met when we were so far. Thirty years ago, and because um, um, we've always kept in touch, blah blah blah. Philip's from Bermondsey. Uh, Peckham at the time when we did before, and uh, uh, he's a mad, mad collector of memorabilia or whatever from his time playing with. The bands that you can see around, he's played with all, all, of, these, all of these bands, <laughs> especially Gregory Isaacs, Lee Scratch Perry, the last one or whatever, yeah? Yeah. And so when I, I was at his place one, uh, I don't know how many, six months ago, I don't know what, uh, before that. And, uh, and he, he tells me about these posters, because every gig that he did, they thought he was mad. All these bandmates thought he was mad, taking down the posters. Um, but he, as you can see, the condition that they're in, <laughs> they're well looked after. Uh, and he had them stuffed in this big, like, uh, haversack thing or whatever. You know. And when I saw them, I went, wow, this is really a history. Here. Yeah. It needs to be told, it needs to be shown. Uh, and so, here we are. Uh, I haven't got into his t-shirt collection yet, because <laughs> he's oh, collected t-shirts, plus uh, it, it, when he played with Gregory, um, uh, Gregory, if people know Gregory was a bit crazy or whatever, uh, and uh, he used to just disappear sometimes and leave all his clothes behind. So when, when they do a tribute to Gregory Isaacs, they dress up a... Uh, 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 what do you call mannequin with Gregory Isaacs clothes and so <laughs> So this is Philip Pauline. Yeah. 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 I just name people, I just come out back with names lioness. And Bob, Bob my teacher, Dr. Joey, my co who was my companion on many of these journeys that he saw up and down because he actually drove Lee Scratch Perry every time he came to Ireland. And we went everywhere in Ireland. We've been Donegal, Paul, Derry, Limerick. Come on, get where else, Jerry? Come on. It was a privilege. No, where else we've been? We've been all over. Go away. Go away. Go away. County Donegal. We've played in all them places with Lee Scratch Perry and Matt Dennis to drive him everywhere. So, for us, yeah, it's really a history for me to see, wow, 10 people now. That, that, this is like my Grammy. 10 people came out to, to spend time with me. Um, this, yeah, this started off with Solid Man over there. Wow. <laughs> you know I mean? But then Bob's been my friend for a good few years and he's followed me on gigs everywhere. And also, you know, he knows the day history and knows what we've done. So it's like, what do we do with all this stuff? Um, <coughs> my life has been like, I was a kid looking at album sleeves in record shops, not knowing why I used to stand there gazing at album sleeves for hours. But then it turned out some years later I worked with all these people who I used to look at on the albums. So collecting posters is like you do a gig and then you think, wow, I'm working with such a man like this man. Who they say um, discovered Bob Marley, and I'm working with him. Just a kid from 
England, I'm born in England, so I'm thinking, well, how, how do we keep that sort of vibe alive, that memory alive, that piece of work that I've done alive? For me, at least if I've got the post, I can take it out and show my grandkids and great grandkids, and that's what I did. You know what I mean? So I used to always connect them, and they were there when they saw people who would see with cameras and say, oh, what? he's always sticking cameras in people's faces, he's always filming everything. Oh, I see me taking off the poster and say, oh, he's in. It's in that case. <laughs> you know, uh, people would come around, and if they were a bit sort of, let's say, oh, boy, they'd say, send him to Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Send him over to Philip. But these people turned out to be photographers or videographers. And they all, everybody had something that they did. It, when my, my colleagues saw these people again and that we were producing work around them, they were like, so can I have that photo of me? Or can I have that of me? Because I've told, I've encouraged them, yeah, take photos because later on they're going to be of value. So, yeah, I've got a lot of stick. <coughs> I've got a lot of stick. But you're here, so it's made it all work. Right? <laughs> okay, so now I don't want to talk too much. Um, I see a lot of musicians just wanting to kind of... Jam, yeah, like they say, jam. Um, so I think I do want to talk because we're talking about life in dub, that which Bob entitled it life in dub. I'm not really an exponent of dub, but to explain dub, you kind of got to go back to the beginning of the whole thing to understand where dub and how dub, why dub became something that's now become a, a, a genre of its own. People just record bits of music to dub it as dub. But it, Jamaican music started off with a thing called mental, which I don't even want to go there and play it to you, but songs like Deo, 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 like Dominic Mano, so that was like an indigenous folk type of music. There's another one, Anthea's favorite. Please, Mr. Dante, touch me to the eater. Touch me to the eater. Touch me and the elbow you can do. But the father touch, touch me to the eater. Tell me that don't sound suggestive. <laughs> and it was church people making those kind of things. <laughs> so, but that's, that's one where it started and then you had another church element which was um, Pocomania, they call it Kumuna, and it, 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 it kind of goes boom, 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 boom. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Like, it's like it was using church to that beat and people pray to it, and if I show you the videos of what people do when they heard that sound going off in church. <laughs> and then, that kumina led to dancehall style, uh, which is like, guys, have you, you heard about Shaggy, wasn't me? North Carolina? He's like a Jamaican DJ where um, they sort of talk over tracks, but talking melodies. So the next place where like the music developed, Kumina and this side you had the Rastas. Now the Rastas gave you a thing that went like this. What does that sound like? Party. Ah yeah, exactly. So the Rastas said that is the heartbeat. So when we were doing things like 
Like, this is not a drum, but I'm gonna make it. Really <laughs> to be doing something like So that's like Naya Bingi. So what happened to the music? The musicians started listening to America and uh, rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues led to scat. Does anybody, can anybody play me scat? Uh, 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 say like,
Yeah, so that's where Dove came, came from anyway, and then it's all developed and gone on and gone. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so that's what made it happen and that's what made it nece necessary. From that, you've got to remember, that's where rap came from. Because the guy who was in the dance who would say, oh yeah, and this is a brand new from Bob Marley and the Wheelers. And then he'd turn it over and he'd start telling you something else. I'm your number one boss DJ. Yeah, I'm your number one DJ. And then that's where MC and rap and all that came from. <laughs> There's a guy who does that here, Paulie Ellis called Hugo Duncan. <laughs> 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 it's a wee bit different, but it's kind of like the Northern Ireland version. Yeah, 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 no, but I mean, they, it came from the first guy that did it. The first, the first guy that did it was a guy called Count Machuki. And um, if you Google Count Machuki, you'll find he was the guy at night when they signed on in in Clement Dodd's club, Downbeat's club, he would be introducing the song and saying things like, this is the number one station and we have the baddest version, listen to this and try it on. That's where rap came from. And then more and more it became necessary that the guys who were on the mic were making their own stories and producers were hearing them in the dances and taking them in the studio by day and by tomorrow morning that song has been played and then by next week every every song wants a copy of it because it's the hottest thing going. Um, guys like you right, Dennis Al Capone, Prince Jasbo, Big Youth, uh, Yellow Man, Shaggy, all of them are born from that tradition, come right back to the two packs. Uh, everybody know Tupac? Mm -hmm. um, Notorious B.I.G. The whole notion of to talking over a backing track came from having a dub and now you've got to entertain the people. Um, I saw it happen in England before. Um, I saw when the first guy, the first sound system came from Jamaica to England to play in London and there was a guy there talking and dancing and skanking and you're thinking, wow, is that how it really goes, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I've, I've saw kids, um, nowadays music is like, um, for me, it's like you can sit in your bedroom, you've got the capability of a computer which makes a studio for you, you can write a track, you can make a video, you can put it out there, and people like it and you become a star. Back in the day, you had to stand up in a dance all night long and talk on the mic and make sure you can entertain the people before someone took you on to record you. And you had, that was a skill in itself. You were a performer, you know, you didn't just do it the first time you did it. Now I shit myself. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and then, and then you're there and imagine you're there and you've been given the mic and you're not taking the opportunity and then someone's going to turn and go, take the mic, take this as well. And don't offer them. That's what I know people went through becoming MCs anyway. Let's see if we can play some music. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 